Welcome back to a special edition of Spotlight where we feature the University of Central Arkansas's College of Fine Arts and Communication. And today I'm at the Baum Gallery of Fine Art joined by my friend Brian Young who is the director. So welcome Brian, we love, we'd love to do this every semester. Thanks, glad to, glad to be here. This is the uh, BABFA Senior Show. So tell us a little bit about the history of, of what this is. So twice a year in the spring and in the fall, we feature the work of our graduates either those in, let's say, the fine arts, either getting a BFA or a BA. And one of those requirements is they have to show their work in this museum setting. And so it's a tradition that goes back at least to 1995 when the Baum Gallery opened. Wow. So. Because before then we didn't have a place, right? As far as I know. Uh, so me not too. Like this. Yeah, me yeah. too. So, so um, um, how, I mean, I know a lot of artists want to, um, are solitary, and, mm -hmm. and, and is, this, is this a big deal? I mean, I'm sure it's a big deal for them to get out, but it's, I bet it's hard for them sometimes to sort of break out of their shells and, and to put themselves out there for all the world to see. Right, so in addition to preparing their work, right, yeah. they have to get their work ready, whether it means framing it or thinking about how they're gonna present it, then there's also maybe a psychological or emotional aspect yeah. of choosing um, how they're going to present their work, not just the work itself, but how is the work gonna play with other works around it? Mm. Um, what are some of the expectations that their faculty members have? Um, how do they begin to select or accept the space that they've been assigned? And so that kind of plays into it as well. And I think there's another aspect that their work, whether they choose to or not, is going to be compared to their peers. Sure. So if, um, you know, if they're not ready for that, then maybe they're not ready to be a full-time artist, which is okay. Mm -hmm. It's not a requirement, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it's, it's the start of that process of being judged whether you've wanted that or not. <laughs> so have most of these artists exhibited before? I think in some level, maybe either in our annual student art competitive mm -hmm. at the Black Box Gallery, maybe they um, show at UCA downtown. Mm -hmm. So we try to give them opportunities, but it's also up to them. So if they choose not to show it in those other venues, we can't really force them. Sure, but, but now we can for the senior show. <laughs> now, now we can, yes. <laughs> okay, so let's talk some details. We yep. have eight uh, artists on exhibit. Correct. Okay, and they include uh, Brooksy Morales, mm -hmm. Lainey Necessary, Caleb Robbins, and Anna Neal for the BA. Yes. And Wes Hart, Michaela Overly, Grayson Ruppel, and Anna Wagner for the BFA. Yes. So tell us a little bit about the difference between the BA and the BFA. So the BFA is um, it's a little more demanding and it has more coursework as an artist. Mm -hmm. So they have to go through um, extra credit hours in that area. So, and the expectations in this particular exhibition are also a little bit higher as well. So that their, um, their footprint is typically a little bit larger. So for example, with um, Brooksy Morales, she has the full front gallery and um, with Wes Hart, he has the entire, um, what we call gallery number three, mm -hmm. and uh, Grayson Ruppel has all of gallery number four and a couple paintings as well, and so that's part of the expectation. So who determines this? That's where you come in, right? As so, a, how, yeah. how, what's your role in all of this? So my role is to take the work that the students, um, that have been accepted by their professors, so they're saying, we think you should show this, this is how we think you should present it, and then once all that work is gathered, then it's my job to assign placement of that work and to make sure that it works kind of cohesively. And I also have another role that others don't, and that is I want to make sure that every year or every semester the presentation is maybe a little different than the year before. Mm -hmm. Well, so, when I walked in, I was like, wow. This right. Is, mm -hmm. So. That's something that the current students don't think about, and I don't ask them to think about that, but, and I also want to mix up who goes into what, you don't want to have, always have painting when you first walk in, or always have photography. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't always want to just have, so I want to make sure that I mix it up from year to year, and I play a game in my own head, and that game is, um, I pretend that either the dean of the college, the chair of the fine arts, or the president, that they're gonna walk in here, and how are they gonna feel about the output of the art department in general. Are they gonna see a cross section? Are they gonna see variety? Um, are we gonna make sure that the artists show their work in a professional manner? Um, so I try to pretend that I'm one of those three mm -hmm. people and make sure that um, 
that we have kind of the department's best foot forward. And I try not to let any personal preferences get in the way. I try to be as objective as possible. Mm -hmm. So tell us about these eight artists. What sort, we have lots of different media. Right, that's always the... Yeah, that's fun. Always the key. So we have um, Lainey Necessary who's doing painting. We have Caleb's work, he's doing graphic design. We have Anna Wagner's doing ceramics. We have video, we have photography, we have mixed media. Um, and even in a sense, uh, in the last gallery we have conceptual work, work that um, almost is um, low-end fabrication. And so that's kind of an aesthetic consideration as well. So you walk in with this Maximus black gallery and then you end with a little bit of bewilderment, almost like scribbling on the walls, breadcrumbs on the floor. So, so the idea is that I think from the time you walk in until the time you finish, it's just a, a miniature journey. Great, great. So what's the timeline? How long have, uh, I mean, they, they hung these pieces or they, they moved these pieces for exhibit when? Last week? Yeah, so the show opened on November 1st okay. and then they, I think we began to install it around November 24th. So they had Oct about five, six, October, uh, October, October 24th. excuse me, yes. Okay, okay. So we had about a week, okay. um, six working days okay. to put it together. And give us the details, uh, how long it's on exhibit, gal uh, hours of the gallery. So the gallery's open Monday through Friday, 10 to 5. We have extended evening hours on Thursday until 7, closed on the weekends. And the show will run through December 16th. Excellent. Don't miss your chance to get out and see this exhibit. It's fabulous. And we're going to be back next with one of the artists. What will you find at UCA? The next generation of artists, educators, and communicators. The College of Fine Arts and Communication offers 42 undergraduate and graduate programs of exceptional quality. Contributing to a deeper appreciation of the human experience. But we also invest in your experience. With broadcasts, conferences, exhibits, live performances, publications, recitals, readings, and screenings. We even offer a unique artist in residence program featuring performances and master classes with accomplished visiting artists. All of that experience pays off. The school placement rates of our music teacher graduates with K-12 certification is close to 100%. We have many disciplines here, but they all share the same dedication to rigorous practice and scholarly achievement which is why our graduates perform so well. The College of Fine Arts and Communication at the University of Central Arkansas. Go here and go anywhere. I'm back here now with Anna Wagner, who is a BFA candidate in ceramics. So welcome, uh, Anna, to Spotlight. Thank you so much. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? I'm, um, I'm actually from Wichita, Kansas. And how did you wind up here to study art? Um, it's kind of a little backstory, but I... We like I, those. We like those, okay. <laughs> well, um, I had a little downfall with my family, and so um, my mom and my stepdad um, wanted to take me in here at BB Arkansas, oh, yeah. and so I ended up going to UCA mm -hmm. um, around 2015, so... Okay. And how did you become an artist? How, as a little girl, have you always wanted to be... Yeah. Okay, um, tell me about that. So I actually started drawing I think most children start drawing whenever as the youngest is like two or three. And I just kind of continued and I started making shadows at an early age. I started noticing de details at an early age. Um, for a while there, whenever I was uh, in like in middle school and high school, I didn't really see myself as an artist because you always get those rumors about how artists don't make any money. <laughs> yeah, so um, it wasn't until, you know, my sister, uh, Amber, who actually convinced me like, this is something that you're good at, this mm -hmm. is who you are, you need to continue it. And she actually brought out all the things I've drawn over the years and she says, this is who you need to be. So wow. continue it. Yes. So how old were you then? I was around about 18, 19 years mm -hmm. old. Mm -hmm. So you came to UCA to study art? Um, yes, I actually okay. came to UCA okay. to study art. And tell me about, you know, you started drawing. Uh, mm -hmm. what, what other forms have you used? Uh, painting? I mean, you, you oh, moved yeah. to ceramics, but how, let's talk about that in a minute. What, what, what brought you here to ceramics? What other routes? So, um, what brought me here to ceramics was actually Holly Law's class. Mm -hmm. we, I started uh, making these um, uh, little kittens. Mm -hmm. on, um, on a shovel, and I made these kittens out of air-dry clay that you get from Walmart, 
And, and you had never done ceramics before? I had never done ceramics before, really. And you're already in school here, okay. Yes. Hmm. Um, and then after that, we started making a project about microscopic animals, and so I did these these fleas that were reminiscent of um, Salvador Dali's elephants. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I just, it wasn't until maybe like a year or two later that I started taking uh, Liz Smith's ceramics class. Excellent. Yeah. So uh, you're not gra graduating until May because you're mm -hmm. working on internships. Yes. Tell us about the one you just finished. So uh, this last summer I took 150 hours. So originally you're supposed to take 300 hours for your internship requirements. So I took one half mm -hmm. at the Clay Art Center at Port Chester um, in New York. And I am now uh, going to do an internship with um, ceramic artist Jason Briggs in South Dakota. In the spring? Yeah, in and the then spring. And then you'll graduate it. And what do you want to do after you graduate? So after I graduate, I, I plan on, of course, like just taking a year. So during my year, I'm just gonna make my work. I'm gonna put them out into exhibitions and galleries. Um, I'm also gonna sign up for um, a residency, a six, week, six to seven week residency at Chautauqua in New York. Mm -hmm. And also, I plan on um, also signing up for a week workshop at Aramont. And if I don't get that, then I definitely plan on doing the six-week workshop at Aramont. Good for you. So what can you say to your sister now for sort of saying, you know what, this is what you need to do? Because I can tell you're passionate about this. You, you, you're where you're supposed to be. My sister has always been like a, a, a second mother to me. She's always, she, she's like 13 years older than me, mm -hmm. so she's always like, looking out for me and I, I couldn't just you know give it all to my sister I have to give it to my mom as well she's always been she's always been really passionate about me continuing to draw so I have to give the credit to both of them excellent because because I can tell I mean there's no point in going off and doing something to make a living mm -hmm. if you're not happy yeah so good for you thank you so much good. so tell us about this exhibit um, well we're going to talk about some of the individual pieces in a moment but overall uh, tell us about your your um, inspiration so um, when I was about three to four years old, uh, I had somewhat of a hearing problem to what my mom thought. And she took me to the doctor and the doctor said, she doesn't have a hearing problem, she has ADHD. It's because whenever my mom called my name, I didn't necessarily hear her. I just- <laughs> You were involved in something I was, else. I was involved in something else and I would just walk right past her and so, um, after that uh, visit, I was put through um, some treatments. Uh, they examined me, they talked to me, and uh, they put me through like some speech therapy. And so it's been, that's kind of been my inspiration. Uh, about a few, well, actually, whenever um, I started taking Ritalin at a, such a young age, and that young, three yeah. or four. <laughs> yeah, around, yeah, between. About, I think it was around six years old. I okay. actually started being prescribed to it too, about eight years old. And I was losing a lot of weight. I was having nightmares at night. So my mom took it off of me. Um, and then whenever I was between the ages of 18 to actually now, I was taking Vyvanse and Adderall. And about a few years ago, I was losing a, a significant amount of weight. Mm -hmm. And it, was, it got to the point to where my parents had pointed out to me, my friends had pointed out to me that I, there's something wrong. And so I actually, took, um, I actually took a break from it for about a couple years to gain the weight back. And it, it, it was really hard to gain that weight back because your body was so used to this process of like not eating mm -hmm. like throughout the day. And so that was when I was, um, in Professor Massey's sculpture class that I started to work on the idea of like um, inebriated body forms because I was trying to figure out where my body was in the spectrum. Mm. And it's this idea of like what I, what I have to give in order to receive. I have to give up my body in order to feel normal. Mm -hmm. um, and so from there on, uh, it kind of led to like from body image to what is the real problem? It's the ADHD. Hmm. And that's kind of how it all began. So you have 17 pieces. Yes. Okay. And so we're going to talk about a few of them, but how are you doing now? Are you, are you feeling good? I'm relieved. Um, it's been a long year of um, working on these pieces and 
you know, planning and talking through them, working out the ideas and the kinks. So I, I feel pretty good. <laughs> I bet, I bet. And so all these were made in the last year? All these were made okay. in one year, yes. Okay. okay, Anna, tell us about this one. So this one has a little bit of a, a story behind it. So last year, we, uh, me and my friends, went to Inseca in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And Inseca is a ceramic conference that everybody in around the world goes to. And so it's all these different types of uh, ceramic artists that sell their work and show off their work. Um, so there is a little lecture about ceramics and ADHD. And we're all in a room just talking about, you know, what it was like for us. Well, there is this girl there that said whenever she is um, kind of shutting down and being overwhelmed. She always says, pause, 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 over and over again until she calms down. And so this, hmm. this is kind of a, a tribute to that moment when I was in there and I, I felt it. You know, I, hmm. I felt what she was going through and it was just, it was a very poignant moment for her. So tell, tell me about actually making this. So um, I threw this piece on the wheel and then, um, so I kind of had a, so you have to always make a cylinder first. And then what I would do is I would just kind of flatten it out on the wheel. And then um, I actually did not add a foot, but after um, uh, it was thrown and I carved the bottom, I added these little feet where I just like grabbed a ball of clay and I just like smashed with oh. my thumb in mm -hmm. it and I just attached it on the bottom. Oh. So. Love it. Love it. So this is a self-portrait? Yeah, this is a self-portrait. I actually had to go and scroll through a few of my uh, pictures whenever I was like around two or three years old to kind of create the image here. Um, so this is my candy dispenser, and it's this idea that the whole Adderall epidemic is just being handed out like candy, mm. and just almost anyone and everyone can just go to the doctor and get prescribed one. So. That's, mm. yeah. <laughs> Talk about some of these details here. Um, so I've always been such a fan of staining. And what staining is, is um, it's this liquid uh, pigment that, um, so your work has to be uh, completely fired, which is bisque fire, which is like the first step. And then what I would do is I would put stain all over my piece and then I'll wipe it away so that way it, brings out these little uh, details and these little scratches throughout the piece. And I've, I've always loved it ever since I took ceramics once. So it's just something that I've always continued. Um, I get inspired by comic books. Mm -hmm. I, when I was younger, um, my stepbrother uh, and I would always like watch uh, the anime series of Batman and Justice League and Superman, who we would always talk about you know, comic books of what Batman's doing right now or in the DC world, what's going on. And I've always been such a uh, cartoon fan. Mm -hmm. So I get a lot of my inspirations of the color schemes and the outlining of everything from, from those. I love these legs. Thank you so much. <laughs> Originally, there was a whole bunch of them on the bottom. I was like, that's not working. So I just like, just took a bunch of them off and oh. I just created, this little detail that's on the bottom. Oh, I love that, yeah. So, I, so it, was, it was full of? Yeah, it was full of those okay. pegs. Sometimes whenever you're not liking something, you just like sit and ponder for a while and you're like, that's gonna have to change. I, I, like, I like that, and people don't, I think people see finished pieces and they think that that's how, yeah, that's how it. you intended it forever. Yeah. And it's, it's so interesting to see the process. There have been a lot of um, sketches to where I would have to scrap every single one of them. I would just be sitting on my couch at home, like doing, watching TV, and I'll just like do scrap after scrap. And I even watch like cartoons in order to get inspired. And I just like, I just could not find it. But sometimes whenever you walk back from your pieces and come right back, mm -hmm. you find that inspiration mm -hmm. from your subconscious. Love it. So this, I, for a lot of my pieces, half of them ha are portraits of my, some of my friends that I'm really close with. And a lot of my friends also have like invisible uh, mental um, illnesses. Uh, some of them have dyslexia, some of them have Asperger's, some of them have ADHD. Um, 
one of my friends has uh, severe anxiety and depression, so I, I try to contribute them to these pieces so that way they have a voice in my work. So this is uh, one of my very closest friends, Wes Hari. His uh, work is actually in the other room right now, and he has um, dyslexia. And so I, um, during the time that we were getting started on these projects, I took a bunch of pictures of him just kind of screwing around, being himself, and he just started being part of my work, so. Love it. And it's this idea of having um, kind of like word vomit whenever you don't know what to say or whenever you're trying to say something. It all comes out as mm -hmm. word vomit. You don't, <laughs> it, all the words kind of mash together and it just becomes stupid and you don't know what to say. So this is what <laughs> the idea is. And I know that we've all been through that, so. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So Anna, um, I'm, I'm just very touched by all what all this means to you, and, I, and you, it, I think maybe people don't come in to think about the backstory, yeah. and I, I love that you've shared all this with us. Thank you. So It was really hard. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure. Thank you I'm so sure. much. Well, congratulations. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll be back again in a moment with Brian Massey to talk about the overall show. Here I am back at UCA. This is where I got my start. Acting in plays, studying literature, writing scripts, Campus has grown so much in the last few years, and the technology is incredible. UCA is where I learned the craft of storytelling and got ready for a career in New York and LA. That's how I got here. Go here and go anywhere. Go UCA. I'm back now with my friend Brian Massey, who's the interim chair of the Department of Art and a, a favorite of Spotlight. So welcome back. Thank you for having we're, me back. We're on, we're on your territory now. So uh, this has got to be just fun for, uh, for an art faculty member and certainly the chair of the department. Uh, it's the culmination of what we do. Yeah, you know, it's, it's four years, five years, for some maybe six, <laughs> to get this all together and uh, to have it all displayed so that the public can see it is yeah. a really a really good thing for our students. Oh, I'm sure, and and it's 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 an it's a shot in the arm for the faculty to know that we're getting them, that we're getting them to the place that they need to be. Right. It really does because you see a freshman come in in mm -hmm. art classes. They take those drawing ones and two design, three design classes, and you look at the skill set. You think, oh no, I got my challenges ahead <laughs> of me. But you see a student begin to grow over the yeah. years and begin to take what they've learned from those core classes and apply it to not only their, their own artistic style, their own art voice, but taking the things they've learned from faculty and from the lectures mm -hmm. and the demonstrations and then put it all together in the work to make it happen is really a great joy to see. I mean, how, how proud must you be of all these? these it's, it's almost artists. like a dad with children. I'm sure, I'm sure. You, know, you see your kids sort of struggling for a little bit and you want to jump in and help them. And there are some cases I'll jump in on a project with the students and say, what if you think about this? What would it look like if we did this or did that? And they say, okay, I never thought about that before. Mm -hmm. So it happened to see things in a different way, mm -hmm. and then see them take those ideas and things that they've heard about, talked about, incorporate them to their own work, mm -hmm. and see the end results. Yes, it's very rewarding. So tell us about the process. Now, at what point do these students meet with their faculty? Do they have faculty mentors? Is there a committee? Talk about that. For the, uh, the, the BA students, they have a committee of, of faculty that they meet with. Uh, that looks at their work through the uh, portfolio classes and talk about you know the good, the bad, and the ugly. And that's about their junior year? About their junior year. Okay. Um, the BFA students have to do a BFA practicum. They have to submit it and have to be approved by the faculty. They have a faculty advisor, sometimes a secondary advisor. Mm -hmm. And then three times a semester we meet with those students as a collective whole of faculty, oh, discuss okay. their work, talk about the work, again the good, the bad, and the ugly, mm -hmm. and talk about what they can do to improve. Hmm. And so uh, at some point, the faculty committee has signed off on all of these pieces. Yes, right? when, we've when all would signed off. Uh, probably during that final practicum, when they, they, meet, when they meet within the uh, with faculty, probably sometimes as soon as the, the current semester. Oh, okay. Sometimes the work takes a long time to complete. Right. You know, in Anna's right. case, it took a long time to complete her work because there's so much going on. But once the faculty have seen the work, we, we meet here in the gallery on the day they bring it all in. Okay. And then we talk about how to set it up, where to set it up, what should be here, what should be there, give them some advice. But I always tell the student, regardless of what we say as a faculty, it's their work. Sure, their name's on it. Their name's on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so how um, many of these, were some of these pieces made like before they knew, I, I mean, were they made in some classes as a sophomore maybe or a junior? Uh, 
good you asked that question because we tell them at the very beginning, once you do your BF practicum, all the work you've done beforehand cannot be in the show. Is that right? Okay, okay. They may have, with the BA students, they can choose up to two works they've done in the class or outside of class to mm -hmm. be into their work. But the majority of the work has to be done that final two or three semesters of their, their final year. And, and they know that they're building toward this. And they know this. they're building okay. toward this. Okay. What, talk about the internship program. They're required for all art majors, is that right? Or? For BFA. BFA, uh, okay. The BAs don't have to do an internship. They can have an option to do so, but mm -hmm. they're not required to. But the BFAs are required to do a 300-hour internship. We're probably the only four-year institution in the state that has that requirement on our BFA candidates. Uh, and on top of the internship, we were able to, two years ago, able to help fund those. So through the wow. Wingate Foundation, mm -hmm, we were able mm -hmm. to fund those expenses for those students to have those expenses for travel, for food, whatever. And we, it's capped at a certain amount so mm -hmm. that they get that money so they know they have that, but they have to apply for that. It has to be approved by the faculty and then approved by me. And that's, that's carrying on? That's that started on. two years ago? It started ago. two okay. summers ago. Two summers. And so, so when Anna went to New York and when she goes to South Dakota, she'll be able to apply for yes. some living expenses? Yes. Oh, wonderful. And so how, how do they find these internships? Is that something that they just find or do y'all have a catalog? We don't have a catalog. I used to tell students, you know, Think about what you're doing, find an artist out there that's working similar to what you're doing, mm -hmm. contact the artist, because believe it or not, you call them, they will answer you back. You email, they will <laughs> answer you back. And that's an important lesson. It really is. That they need to learn There's that. very few artists that I've come across that don't respond to a student. Mm -hmm. If you tell them, I'm a student, I'm working on my degree, I'm interested in your work, I'd like to work with you, blah, 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 most of them will respond. Great, great. And so where do they go? I mean, they go all they over. They can go anywhere. Give us some ideas. Uh, where Grayson else? Rupert just got back from Vienna, Austria. He did his internship in, in Vienna wow, last wow. summer. Okay. And so they can choose to go anywhere they want to, in state, out of state, in country, out of the country. Uh, again, we try to help them with the expenses, but we we're limited, not scholarships, but uh, so a lot of them need to come up on their own. Mm -hmm. Now, Brian, uh, a couple of years from now, or I guess next year, we're going to break ground on the Wingate Center for Fine and Performing Arts. Yes. How will that change what we're doing here? It won't change as far as what we're doing here in the bomb gallery. This, this, this will this stay. This is going to stay. Okay. Uh, what happens for us, it puts us in a facility where, as right now, we're in three different buildings on five different floors. So with the new facility, it's going to put everybody on the one roof or in the same location, whereas you get that uh, chance for collaboration. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it's hard for someone in ceramics to walk over to the graphic design right, lab right. and sort of have some sort of conversation. Uh, and that's what I thought was important about getting us on the wooden roof because I, during my days in graduate school, I was always able to go to the stadium and look, walk, talk to the painters. Mm -hmm, I'm mm -hmm. not a painter, but I was a sculptor, so I was talking mm -hmm. to the painters. So I, I know the importance of collaboration with other artists outside your field mm -hmm. is important to for those new ideas to really, really occur. And so, but the BA, BFA show will still be in the bomb. Still be in the bomb. Great, great, yes. great. There will be exhibit space though over there. Yes, there will be a exhibit space over there because one thing we're going to be losing is the black box gallery. Okay. And I wanted okay. to make sure in the new facility that the students still had that power to run the gallery, set up the shows, mm -hmm. and have artists bring in that they can bring in to show students' work. And, and so the bomb gallery will continue on uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll be here again to, to showcase the, the senior, stu senior student work. Yes, we will. Excellent. Yeah. Thank, Brian, thanks for joining us again, Anytime. always, and we'll see you next time for Spotlight.